fresh homemade tomato jam. Here we go. Good Cities Adventures here, and in today's video, I'm going to show you something interesting. I'm in my front yard, sitting here in front of my butterfly garden, and I planted a tomato plant right in the center. So, we have three tomatoes that are ripe, ready to be picked, so what we're gonna make today is tomato jam. All right, so I was able to pick three tomatoes off our tomato plant in front butterfly garden, so that's what our recipe is gonna be today. I'm gonna walk you how to measure the ingredients for however many tomatoes you have. The first thing you're gonna do is put these in a pot, fill that right to the top with water. All right, and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take them out and you're gonna boil this amount of water. And when that comes to a boil, you're gonna drop the tomatoes in and boil it for five minutes. All right, now we have a full boil, so I'm gonna drop the tomatoes in there, turn the heat down, put the lid on, and let that boil for five minutes. All right, the timer went off, it's been five minutes. Let's turn the heat off. Now we're gonna take our tomatoes. Notice I didn't cut any weird lines in them. You don't need to do that. They're gonna expand and halfway peel on their own anyway. So now what we're gonna do is take the tomatoes, put those in an ice bath to cool them off. And that's pretty much just so I can use my hands and peel the rest of the peel off and get like that little top green thing off of them. So I'll just let them chill for a couple seconds. Now you see the water over here in the pan? We're gonna keep that because that's part of the ingredients for the next step. We'll come back to that. Okay, next step, this is cooled down a bit. We'll just put a paper towel down. Now these are cool enough to touch with your hands. Now you'll notice that in my video, if you watch our channel, I keep it simple. That way it's just like I tell you the truth about how to cook. All you need to do is just grab this with your hands. See, I didn't need to cut any funny lines or anything like that. It just expands in the water and it peels right off. And it's easier to handle if you put it in a little ice bath. If you don't have an ice maker or cold water, just wait until it cools. So that's what you do. You just take the peel off. Now we'll come over here with a knife and We'll just take that little green knot out. And the center is sort of hard right here. We're gonna discard that. There's one little, on this side, piece. Nobody wants to eat that, okay? We'll do that with the other two. Ooh, here's the nicest looking one of the bunch. Okay, that's no good. Throw that out. We're gonna use that for our jam. Now take your spatula, put your tomatoes and all the sauce and everything that comes with it all into a bowl. Okay. Now you take your tomato masher and you mash them up real good. Don't use a food processor or a pureeer or one of those little zip sticks because you will blend it up too much and turn it into a jelly and I don't think that's any fun with tomato jam. I think it's more fun if you see the seeds in the clumps a little bit. It just gives you a nice texture because you don't want to feel like you're eating ketchup. And we're, if you blend it, it gets all the seeds too. Yeah, we're making jam, not liquefied jelly here. So that's all you need to do for mashing that up. All right, now here's what we're gonna do. So here's the rule for when you make tomato jam. For every tomato, put in a quarter cup of sugar. So I had three tomatoes. I'm having three quarters cup of sugar. That keeps it simple and easy for you. Now we'll take some salt. We'll do a nice big giant pinch of salt. Here's some cinnamon. We're gonna take a nice giant pinch of that. This is a quarter teaspoon. So that's perfect. And then we're gonna take lemon juice and just do a cap full, okay? All right, now you're gonna take and mix that up. All right, now we have a skillet here. 
Is this an all clad uh, one? I guess there's a problem with aluminum. It leaches into the tomatoes, so you don't want to use that. We're going to take the water, which is the exact amount of water that it took to pour it over the top of the tomatoes. We're going to pour that back in there. We're going to pour our tomatoes in here. And then we're going to boil that and reduce that. All right, what happens if you're cooking up multiple tomatoes, like five or 10 or 15 or 20? Do you need to put all of the water in there? No, just keep it simple. Put your puree in your pan and then just fill it up maybe three quarters of the way with the water. It just gives it an opportunity to cook and mesh all the flavors together and then cook down and reduce into the jam. Keep it simple. So if you're gonna double or triple or quadruple the recipe, just think about it and add a couple more pinches of salt, a couple more pinches of uh, cinnamon. Keep it simple. Um, I don't like to add too many funny flavors to my recipes because then they're a funny flavored recipe. So I just use cinnamon and sugar and salt and lemon juice. Um, but some people like funny flavors, so go ahead and put your funny flavor in there. Here we are about five or 10 minutes later. I have it on high heat, it's reduced quite a bit, so we'll just keep mixing that up a little bit so nothing sticks to the bottom of the pan. Looks like it's doing just fine. All right, we're getting down there. Most of the water is all boiled off, so keep scraping that around so nothing gets burnt and sticks to the bottom of the pan. At this point in time, turn it down to about medium and just watch it. Now that's gonna continue to thicken. And when it looks like jam, you're gonna turn the heat off. So just a couple more minutes here. I'm gonna turn it down to between medium and low right now because I have a power burner here. So if you're not gonna use a power burner, don't use too much water in the beginning. It'll just take longer. It probably took about 10 minutes or so for my recipe to reduce because I have a super powerful power burner. Um, if you don't, then just do what's right for your kitchen. It's getting really close now. We want to continue to cook off that water and make that into a nice jam consistency. As soon as I take that off and put it in a container, it's going to thicken a little bit also. So I'll just flatten that out a little bit. Now that my heat's on low, it almost kind of looks like we're going to make a fruit roll up here. So just watch that boil a little bit. All right, you wanna know when it's done? When it looks done. So the heat's on low. If you need to turn it down to super low, go ahead. But when you move it around, there's not enough water in there to keep steaming. It's done. Remember, it's gonna thicken when we take that off. So let me turn the stove off. And then we'll come over here, our spatula. We'll pour that into a container. You can put it into a mason jar right away, but we're gonna put it in this jar, let it cool, and then we'll eat it on um, our fresh made popovers. All right, it's just been a couple minutes and it's already starting to cool and thicken up. I am dying to taste this. I just had a little on the spatula. It was so delicious. And of course, we'll have to make some fresh popovers. Here they are straight out of the oven. All right, we'll take a little spoonful here. Put that over a fresh baked popover. First, a little taste test. Mm, the perfect recipe. And now the popover with the tomato jam. Mm. It doesn't get any better than that. that would Here we have a Triscuit with some cream cheese with onion chive and a little bit of tomato jam. Now that is a treat. That was fun. Thanks for watching.
Twin Cities Adventures, out.